<coughs> Hello everyone. Uh, this is the second chapter of Snapshot, class 11. The address by Marga Minka. Now this short story is a poignant account of a daughter who goes in search of her mother's belongings after the war in Holland during World War II. <coughs> Uh, this, the background of this story is Second World War. The Germans, the Nazis under Hitler, invaded Holland where 90% of the people were Jews. Many of the Jews fled in fear to other countries. Thousands were imprisoned in concentration camps. A woman and her little daughter had also to leave their home. The woman left all her things with a woman known to her. <coughs> After some time, the woman died. However, her daughter remembered the place where she used to live with her mother. Long after the war, she came to the town where she used to live with her mother. She went to meet the woman with whom her mother had left all her things. But the woman refused to recognize her because she didn't want to return the things she had taken. Then she gives up the idea of getting them back again and decides to leave all of them behind with her. She resolves to forget the address where those belongings lie in unpleasant surroundings. Now, Marga Minka herself was a victim of this Holocaust. Uh, she, during the war, almost uh, for two, three years, she was completely in a very, what you can say, concealed place. So sometimes some of the critics say that this story is just, uh, just like an autobiography of Marga Minka. So now we continue with the story. Do you still know me? I asked. The story begins with the narrator <coughs> going to the place and there she finds a person and she inquires whether she remembers her or not. But the woman who stood over there, she had opened the door a chink, slightly open and showed no sign of recognition. Then to make the things more clear to her, narrator says, I am Mrs. S's daughter. Now, this woman who was standing at the door, she, her face had no expression at all. And that made narrator feel that most probably she has made a mistake. Probably she has come to the wrong place. And maybe the things were long back, so she has not remembered the things correctly. Now, at that moment, the woman, the woman who was standing there, she came out and the narrator observed her. She was wearing my mother's green knitted cardigan. The wooden buttons were rather pale from washing. She could recognize, recognize that cardigan, that sweater sort of thing that she was wearing. And she could recognize, and she immediately could understand that she has come to the right place. And the woman, when she saw narrator looking at her so intensely, just once again hid herself right behind the door. So narrator says, you knew my mother. So woman says, have you come back? I thought no one had come back. Now look at this question. So there is some specific reason behind this statement. I thought that no one had come back, which we will come to know later on in the story. The narrator informs that she is the only one who has come. Somewhere from the back, closing of the door or something happened. This lady just, uh, just refused straightforwardly that she could not do anything. Narrator said that she had come there specially to meet her. She wanted to talk, but the woman said it was not convenient, and then she closed the door. For some moment, Narrator stood over there. She looked at the nameplate again. Darling, it said, in black letters and white enable. And on the jam, a bit higher, the number, number 46. The address which she had come to. Then she started walking back. While she was going back to station, she thought about her mother who had given her the year, uh, at this address years ago. Now it was during the first half of the war 
that uh, narrator had come back after maybe a period of time back to her home and she immediately felt some change. She could see some of the things missing. Mother was really surprised that the girl could notice all these things. And then she told about Mrs. Dorling. Narrator had never heard about that lady. And uh, mother told, informed that she was an old acquaintance. And uh, she had come up and they had, she had uh, renewed the contact. And after that, she was coming regularly. The mother informed narrator. Every time she leaves here, she takes something home with her. She took all the table silver in one go. And then the antique plates that hung there, she had trouble lugging those large vases. I am worried she got a crick in her back from the crockery. My mother shook her head pityingly. I would never have dared ask her. She suggested it to me herself. She even insisted. She wanted to save all my nice things. If you have to leave here, we shall lose everything, she says. <coughs> mother was actually thankful, thankful to Mrs. Darling that she had come forward to help them to save their precious things. Now, what was the pretext that Mrs. Darling was taking away the things from uh, Narita's mother? On the pretext that if they would have to leave, most probably, uh, most probably what? Uh, the, uh, this uh, narrator and narrator's mother, they were Jews, and uh, there was always the fear that when Nazis would attack, they would have to leave. So that was the pretext used by Mrs. Darling. Now, just remember, when uh, she asked that you have come back, I thought nobody would come. Now, wh why she expected no one to come? Was she really helping? Or she was just doing it for her own selfish motive? That is very much clear. There was no intention, genuine intention to help. It was actually, she had an eye over the precious things of Narita's mother. And she wanted to take, and she very well uh, had imagined that it was war time. And these people would have to leave, and they would never come back. And then all the belonging would be her. But when she saw narrator's, uh, this, uh, this uh, narrator coming back, she, was, uh, she did not recognize or did not try to help her or did not even give time to talk to her because she was afraid that narrator may claim those things. <clears throat> so when mother informed all this thing, narrator asked mother that, has there been in any agreement? But mother was really angry at this because she felt that the lady was taking so much of risk. Mother very well knew that daughter was not convinced, but then they never talked about it. Now, this was all thing that she remembered when she was coming back from Mrs. Darling's house to station. <clears throat> she had been at that place after a long time, so she did not want to venture because she felt that more she will move her about in that place, more the memories of the past would come back and she did not want to uh, disturb herself with the, those, mom those moments, those memories which were precious to her. <clears throat> now she sat in the train and she remembered Mrs. Darling, how she had seen her for the first time. It was in the morning time. She came down and what she saw, she saw that there was a lady who was carrying something and she was moving and then mother introduced narrator to Mrs. Darling and at this particular point of time, mother said the address when narrator asked where does she live, in Marconi Street said my mother, number 46, remember that. Narita had remembered it, but then after, during the war time, both mother and Narita, they had to leave the place. And then she says that she had waited for a long time, long, a long time to go there. Initially after the liberation, now look at the word liberation. Liberation is liberation from the Nazis. Initially she was not at all interested in that stored stuff. <clears throat> and she was actually afraid of it because she felt that if she will be confronting those things, uh, she will be taken back to those moments which was a past and a painful memory. And uh, she felt that 
these were only things and that is the reason they have been uh, they have sustained in packed in the boxes but she was a human being with feeling and all these things will bring back those painful memories <clears throat> but gradually the things became normal the narrator describes this bread was getting to be lighter color there was a bed you could sleep in unthreatened a room with a view you were more used to glancing at each day and one day i noticed i was curious about all the possessions that must still be at that address i wanted to see them touch remember so initially it was the trauma of the war that stopped the narrator from going to that place but as the time passed things became normal she also came out from that traumatic experience now she had that sudden desire to see those things once more touch them feel them and be reminded of the memories of the past now this is the first part of the chapter <clears throat>